What's cooking YouTube? This is Amazing Cajun here. I've been looking around on the Yugi tubes and there's a lot of people putting up different decks for side, for nationals and different side decks and they're putting like specific side deck cards. So I I've been thinking about a way of segment that I could do and I'm thinking of it. I think I came up with a pretty decent name. It's called Cajun Corner. And basically what I'm going to do is every so often come up with different tech ideas and all that that might could help y'all out along y'all's way and becoming maybe a YCS or national champions if you know you get if I give you the right advice or something but today's episode is going to be dealing with multi-purpose side deck cards instead of specific side deck cards like kinetic soldiers and stuff like that that only really work for one deck I wanted different cards that's going to work for multiple decks that's out there. So I guess I'm going to start this off. Consecrated Light. It catches Grave Keepers. It catches Black Wings. Infernities after the last YCS. There's multiple different cards that it catches. And it's still a decent card if you run in the right deck. So it all depends on the right deck you're running. Effect Veilers. Basically, what deck doesn't this card stop, really? There's so many cards, there's so many decks out there that rely on their effects, this card stops it all. For the most part, most people are going to be main decking it, but if you don't main deck it, definitely side it. It is definitely a card to have somewhere in your deck, slash side deck, or whatever. So it's needed. DD Crow. To me, I think D.D. Crow is better than Crevice and Transmigrational Prophecy. Reason being is this, this format is going to be dealing with your opponent, either Giant Trinading, Brianak, or something to your back row, so where you're not going to actually be able to activate them. So most of this format is going to be dealing with your hand. So that's what Effect Baylor does too. And D.D. Crow does the same thing, but if they target the graveyard with anything, you can just remove their card out of the graveyard. Max C. A lot of people are main decking this card, which is understandable because this format is basically see how much I guess synchro summon, special summon in one turn to win the game. So you're either main decking it or side decking it because with the release of Hyper Librarian, you know people are going to be synchroing their whole field. And especially with Tengu. See, this card right here. Stupidness. It, it that's the reason why Max C is going to be doing so much work at nationals. Penguin Soldier. The this card here interrupts or upsets your opponent's synchro summons like no one's business. It gets around Magatama, which is going to be big because a lot of samurai is going to be there. It gets around Stardust or any card like that and plus you get two of them which is always a plus you trade one card for two of their big monsters their big synchro monsters so why not play it puppet plant no the other one the one you just showed me puppet plant oh it it gets Sheen it gets any samurai it gets any gravekeeper it gets her Spellcaster, you take it for that turn and then you do your synchro and you catch your draws off of it and then you win that turn. You know, it's pluses. See, Shin is a warrior. Any grave keepers, you know, this gets. This, this card is a very good card, especially since it's one of your main outs against Shin since. For the most part, any sink or any magic or traps you try to use against him, you're going to have to have another one to back that one up to pull it off. This card here by itself basically gives you so much advantage because you take their sheen, attack with it. They try to do one of their spells or traps to negate it. You negate it, and if they have another one, that's amazing because you plus two yourself right there. You get rid of you use this to get rid of the first trap. And then you got rid of their Sheen and their other spell or trap. So you cannot go wrong with that. 
Fossil Dino, the P word. I ain't even going to try and embarrass myself and mess up with that last name. Basically, this format is going to be overrun with synchro summons. So, then that what the synchro summons means is special summons. This card right here, first off, if you just summon it and you have back rows to protect it, stops them from doing any big plays they have. And if they do go with the big play already, and you go second, you set it maybe with one or two back rows. So when they do attack, it flips up. And then it destroys all of their special summon creatures, which is a huge, huge plus. Because you get samurais, you get any, um, any plant variants or anything like that. Banisher of the Radiance. This card here goes against the different plants, X Sabers. Oh, um, Jurgunides, basically anything that revolves around a graveyard, if you get him out first, you make them have to rethink their entire play because they're not going to be able to use the graveyard to where they want to, to the best of their ability. Some people might main deck it, depending on what deck they want. I've seen some of the, um, the fairy decks with the Hyperion actually main deck one or two of these just because it actually catches your opponent off guard. All you have to do is summon and um you just use it out there even if, you just use it out there even in like chaos plant sided in you can summon this and you can attack with it and once they finally do get rid of it then you could go off and use all your your special summoning and your graveyard effects because they're going to have to re waste resources to be able to get him off the field the next card that works well with him against certain cards king tiger wangu I don't really know any deck, really this format, that doesn't, to some extent, get hit by this card. Gravekeepers, um, Dragonides, Gravekeepers, they don't have Necro Valley, Dragonides, uh, Plants, Samurais, basically they're going to have to get rid of this before they could do all their fun shenanigans. And Fables, oh my jeez, and Fables do not love that card. That card right there says Fables. You suck. I don't know if it could be put any other way or not, but that's basically what that does to Fables. Thunder King Ryu, with all the searching and all that, and the special summonings, it's necessary. You gotta, you know, this stops it. Any of the special summonings, any of the searching, it's an all around good card. And it always has, and I'm almost positive it will be for quite some time. Doom Cow, same thing with the Effect Feather, since the whole, most of the decks this format revolve around effects, you have put him up and you basically stop any effect that your opponent tries to do at first. You could actually set it, and actually, this is, <laughs> G Hopper 85 loves doing this, setting that against Gladiator Beast, they attack it, since it's 1800, they can't, if they tag out, they don't come back out. They they're gone. But he doesn't. All right. He does. Yeah, he dies. But they're not going to be able to come out because their effect was negated. So you, they, your doom cow is still off the field, but you minus them a creature. And in G in Gladiator Beast, their creatures are extremely valuable to them. Cyber Dragon. This is a card that I've seen yays and nays about for nationals this year. I've seen certain people say they're not going to run it, like they've dropped it out of their side deck, but it's still a good card. It helps you get around Black Wings, Gladiator Beast, Karakuris, because you can make that guy. You know, and I, I believe all those decks, they're, they're not going to probably be shown in a big number, but you will see them and it's still a good card. Cyber Dragon is still a good card to side deck no matter what happens. You never know what your opponent might side into. This helps get around T King Tigers, the um, Banisher and stuff. And for the most part, if nothing else, it makes your opponent waste a solemn morning. So that's always nice. 